HART stands for Hillsborough Artists Regional Theatre. We're a 501c3 nonprofit volunteer based community theatre. I'm in my second year here as co artistic director, about a year and a half. Uh, I came on board in January of 2012. Christmas of 2011, Hart Theatre was in need of a Christmas show. They had a play slated, they had some problems casting it, uh, so they started looking around for another production that could be mounted in a relatively short period of time. Someone told them that I had done a play in Beaverton which could be easily mounted here in a short period of time. They got a hold of me and we did in fact do that production, after which they asked me to stay on as co-artistic director for the company. The shivering shocks! that break the locks of prison gates, and Phoebus' car will shine from far, and make and mar the foolish fates. I started a remodeling company about a year ago. I've been in the industry about seven years, remodeling mainly residential. My company is a, it's a design build company, and so what we'll do is we'll take a client and we'll, we'll design their product, with, whether it's a kitchen, a bathroom, uh, it's all residential construction. We try to put some unique design with every project we do, which is kind of why I like doing stuff like this, because it's very unique and it helps, helps keep me rounded with design. I don't always have to design a kitchen or a bathroom or a deck or something. This is something that plays along with a story, that uh, hel helps me be more creative in my actual job. Paul came back to me in June and he, he asked me basically to, to build some simple platforms. And then a couple weeks ago we got together and we started drawing it up and I said, you know what, he, he was getting really excited about it. So I decided let's, let's make it really nice for him and, and kind of just go all out. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's a nice production, so I want to help them out with getting good profits on it, so why not make it a really nice set? We'll put together a design on paper, um, and for this one I just put a conceptual design together. I didn't have any measurements or anything, it was just kind of a hand-drawn sketch. And then from there we, we got in here, I, you know, we came up with a materials list of some sort and started building it with Paul here to see it as it happens so he can judge scale of the props and things like that. I enjoy giving back to the community um, and this is, this is how I do it. I build things and it's, it's the easiest way for me to give back to the community. Never did muckers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia. I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but as guest-wise sojourned, and now to Helen is it home returned. There to remain with Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the fate thou dost not know. I am costume designer for Heart Theater. I'm also on the board of directors. I always will research so I know exactly what I'm looking for. I don't necessarily sew the costumes myself because that would just take months and months to do. So I go to Gallery Theater in McMinnville, Theater in the Grove. They have large costume departments and they, they loan us whatever we need for free or we donate after we return the costumes. We'll give them a donation for their thank you. Well, none of that. For that have I told my love already in glory of my kinsman, Hercules. I've had costumed shows where it's all very large people and sometimes that's, it's really hard to find costumes to fit certain people, whether they're short, really skinny, super tall. We have a guy that's six feet eight and trying to find a woman's dress that's going to fit him without him ripping it apart like the Incredible Hulk. It's always a challenge. My breast I'm assistant stage manager, prop master, and I play an attendant for the Duke Theseus. The role of stage manager is to help the director mainly. While he's trying to figure out scenes, you keep the, uh, the cues, the blocking for the stage, the, uh, the cuts for the script, anything, you keep all track of that and make sure that it's all organized so he doesn't have to worry about the minor details like that. It's totally different than being on stage because you can see all the little errors that nobody sees up front. Um, 
you know, I can tell if an actor has missed a little bit of line or if a prop has fallen off or anything. But it fits right in. Nobody in the audience catches it, and I just love that because it's kind of like an inside joke for me, I guess. I know when thou hast stolen away from Fairyland and in the shape of corn sat all day playing on pipes of corn and versing love to amorous Philida. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest steep of India. But that forsooth, the bouncing Amazon, your buskin mistress and your warrior love to Theseus must be wedded. And you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. <laughs> put together a pretty good cast and, and, and everyone, almost without exception, has been incredibly dedicated, committed, uh, passionate about it, and um, they're, bringing every, they're just bringing their best every time. About this wood goes swifter than the wind, and hell enough of Athens look thou find. Or fancy six years and pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. This is my 10th year doing theatre. This is actually the first Shakespearean part that I've played. What I've found is that once you know what the lines mean, it's actually, it can be easier to get that across, even if the audience doesn't necessarily know a certain word, as long as you know what it is and you can express what that character's thinking and feeling. A lot of times people in the audience will understand what's going on, even if there's a few words that haven't been used in 500 years. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows. There sleeps Titania sometime of the night, lulled in the flowers and dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap the fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. It's kind of interesting that a show that on paper is identical can be very different from one night to another. And a lot of that is actually due to the audience. Um, audiences can have a personality all of their own. And sometimes you'll find audiences react to completely different things. Uh, one night, one audience will laugh at one thing and then the next night, another audience won't laugh at that. They'll laugh at something else. And that actually, the cast feeds off that energy. And maybe they, they start to look at things that they've gone over and over again and especially with comedy once you've rehearsed it a lot you don't find it as funny and then you go in and put it in front of an audience and suddenly it's funny again so that that really helps to to keep it fresh it's just the the fresh perspective of all the people who are seeing it for the first time oh night oh night a lack a lack a lack <laughs> <laughs> I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh wall, O oh sweet, O oh lovely wall. I, I do tend to avoid whistling backstage. Um, that, that's an old one from the theatres way back in the day in the Regency period. All the stagehands were ex-sailors and they would communicate to each other with whistles like they would on the ship for when they were running the, uh, the, the canvas scenery up and down. So if anyone on stage whistled, for any, any reason, any, someone up in the loft would think that it was a signal and probably drop some scenery on their head. So it's kind of, it's an old safety thing that's become a tradition that, that, that you now don't whistle on stage. Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love so rich within his soul and tender me forsooth affection, but by your setting on, by your consent? What, though I be not so in grace as you, so hung upon with love, so fortunate, but miserable most to love unloved? This you should pity rather than despise. I think that acting is about listening. And if you're really listening to what's happening and what your scene partners are saying, and really listening to them and not just waiting for your cue and then saying a line, but if you make it about listening and responding, um, that helps you to stay in the moment. The will of man is by his reason sweet, and reason says you are the worthier maid. Are things growing are not ripe until their season, and I, being young till now, ripe not to reason, but touching now the point of human skill, reason becomes the marshal to my will. Every night is opening night for the audience. The audience has never seen it. And if you keep that in mind that, that you know, they're coming to see a show, they've bought tickets to a show, um, and you want to make that the best experience that you can for them and you don't want it to seem stale. So um, staying in the moment, 
saying the words like you're saying them the first time, uh, every time. For she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Not with salt tears. If so, my eyes are oftener washed than hers. I don't have any particular superstitions. I think all the, you know, the, the normal ones, like you can't say the Scottish play and turning the ghost light on. It's called a ghost light because it is a bare bulb that gets put in the middle of the stage at the end of the night. Uh, it's a safety precaution, first of all, uh, so you don't fall into the pit if there's an orchestra pit, but it's also there to give light to the theater ghosts so that they feel like they're not abandoned every night. And I'm not a superstitious person by any means normally, but when I come here, you do tend to uh, respect and honor those, those superstitions. I don't know why. <laughs> Thou lovest me, still forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood a league without the town, there will I stay for thee. Oh, my good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, oh, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, by that which knitteth souls and prosperous loves, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. I do feel like being here at heart as co-artistic director is the culmination of a, of a life's work, that this is where it was all leading to. And now that I'm here and have this place, I feel like that's what I wanted to be all along. And constantly trying to find that situation wherein uh, you have, I have the, the freedom to determine the course of, of what happens here. It's, it's really, uh, it's a new high, it's a new point in my life, and I, it's quite a responsibility, and it's one I take seriously and, and welcome heartily. My love to Hermia, melted as the snow, seems to me now the remembrance of an idol god, which in my childhood I did dote upon. I couldn't have asked for a better group of people to have to work with. Um, we're completely like family here. Everybody here has a voice. Everybody here has an opinion, and we're able to speak freely. You don't have to stay, step on eggshells around certain people, and I like that our ideas are, are dealt with and, and, and embraced. Or ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. When that hail, some heat from Hermia felt so he dissolved. Showers of oaths did melt. My husband is mostly my inspiration. You know, he's artistic director, he's on the board of directors, and he got me started in this, and he saw in me what I didn't see. I didn't think I had any kind of talent works for this at all, and he told me that I did, and I, I seem to have a knack for it, so I, I'm just gonna continue to, to strive and, and get stronger at what I do. The a standing ovation, no matter if you're behind the scenes or in front, that's the best part, that they appreciate all the work that everybody's put into it. We at heart are always going to be looking to the future. We always want to expand. We're always looking for ways to make the product better, to make it more appealing to the people who come in the front door and to the people who come in the back door, that is the artists themselves. So you can look next year to see new partnerships, new production partners, new advertising arrangements, and uh, just an expanded profile of the company. Uh, and I honestly think that Hart is becoming a destination for people on both sides of the stage, for audience members and for artists. This is a place to come, see good theater, and be a part of good theater as an artist as well. <laughs>